be the ears and eyes for the director because as he's in the van, he doesn't see everything. So when there's any action outside the camera, I must let the director know what is happening. If there's anybody interesting, and I'm going to put that in inverted commas because everybody is interesting, is worth uh, talking to. But if maybe there's VIPs, then I can just let them know half time. We need to, you know, be interviewing somebody. Our job here on the floor manager's side, we need to make sure all the times, everything is kept in time from the event side and broadcast. We need to make sure players are there for interviews, for post-match presentations, and we're also always the ones that people shout at. Technical issues happen a lot of times, and then that's where you rely on your floor manager. So I think the, the ladies that we've got here working, supporting us, they always need to think on their feet and they do that so well and that's where the leadership comes in. You have to be fit to do this job. Uh, I think generally it has been a predominantly male you know, role, but we found a lot of female talent who are just as capable with doing, the, uh, with doing it just as well. It's great to see some of the women fulfilling those roles as well and just hoping to build on that and making sure that we do have women that come through in those roles and exposing it to people out there and saying, you know, Come in, come and join us. People think of it as, you know, glam, you're in front of a camera, there's people watching you, but there's a lot else um, that goes into it. Uh, a lot of people speaking in your ear, you know, at the same time, you have to think, you have to speak, you have to listen, and also be aware of what's happening around you at all times. But there's also the other element, and that is everything else that happens before you get in front of the camera. You need to prepare visibly. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into this, guys. There's a lot of makeup, a lot of hair and styling. This is not how I wake up. I did not wake up like this. Uh, apart from that, I really just try and be on top of my game when it comes to the knowledge and trying to understand how the coaches would make decisions, um, how the players are making decisions on court, so we can preempt, but also be reactive to everything that happens on court and just kind of bring everyone back home, the full package of what's going on at the netball. I get nervous um, all the time. So there's never a time where, you know, I'm so comfortable that I just run with it. Um, and I think the nerves kick in when I hear Kyo Sunim Daga comment, you know, from the, from the directors, then I know that this is it. I'm still nervous every time I stand in front of a camera, but you shake it off and you go and you get the job done. And I actually enjoy, like, I'm loving it. I'm not just enjoying it, I'm loving it now. So yes, it's a bit of a shake. It's a bit of a, just get the nerves going. It's a good thing. I think nerves and butterflies actually make you prepare harder. Whenever I feel nervous, for me, it actually makes me highly alert. It helps me focus a lot more. And I'm more aware of the words that I'm saying, what I want to say, and how I deliver that message. So nerves is great. It's a good place to be in. It's a good feeling. Um, and I just use it constructively to get the best out of that production. We strive for perfection, right? But sometimes you've got to be able to say to yourself, this is not going to be perfect, but I need to make the most out of the situation. And how can I work around certain things just to make sure that the viewer ultimately has, has a good experience? Because not everything is going to go according to plan, which is, which is quite difficult for someone like me. But I suppose, you know, that, that's the lesson that I, that I need to learn constantly, that, you know, find a way and make it work. Initially, before a big tournament like this, I'll go through every team, so you'll send them a list of the squads that are going to be in there, and I put down all the important facts, you know, with netball, the height, the ages, where they played their domestic leagues, when they had their debut, all that sort of thing. And then, for me, sport is always about telling stories, so what are the interesting little facts? If you're the lead commentator, you'll touch on something that you've seen on court and then the analyst goes in deeper and then they bring in all the nice, interesting stuff that's not um, easily visible. But it is a conversation, it's a partnership and um, you have to have just a good understanding of how each other work. You know, sometimes we, we always say that you've got two ladies with, with a lot of energy but you have to be smart about how we exert the energy in commentary so that it doesn't take over the action on court. Netball is very much an all-inclusive sport. Even though it's a female sport, I think everybody enjoys watching netball. You see dads coming to watch with their daughters and um, you get the whole family experience, old, young, 
um, new to netball, not new to netball. There's a lot of netball that's been played now. There's a DSTV, um, you know, a netball schools. There's telecom netball. There's championship. There's a lot of things that are happening. There's a, even a mini World Cup happening uh, for juniors, for, for, for high school happening just prior to the netball World Cup. So it has really, you know, um, made the sport more popular. This is one instance where we've really made some massive commitments. And I think also just to show the world, you know, how to broadcast the South African way, um, which is vibrant, it's detailed, it's colorful, there's lots of exciting moments in here as well. So I think for me, if we just build on that, you know, um, we know that we, we know we're a global um, broadcaster. And I think our peers out there will also respect the quality of work that we do.